Have you ever felt that moment when someone puts you down or tells you you're too much or says something to rain on your parade and dull your sparkle? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to not let anyone ever dull your sparkle. Today, I'm going to go into the how to not let other people dull your sparkle. And in the in previous, um, previously I shared my own experience about how people have said that I was too much or whatever, said negative things. And this happened uh, a couple of times within a three month period. And I had, I, I did some self-reflection and I asked friends and everything. And I realized I, even in talking to the per, one of the people who said the mean things, I realized I was not, I was not the culprit. And so when I talk to people who are dealing with this and they choose to just fly under the radar rather than, than actually kind of take this head on or they're uncomfortable in the situation, right? When, when I had someone, I, I joined a table for dessert after the, there was a big group of, and it was an event. They had dinner together. I had dinner at another table and then I joined them afterwards and I realized someone was talking about me and said that I was too much. And I didn't know how to deal with it on the spot. I was very taken aback. There were probably eight people at the table. Most of them I didn't know, which also made it uncomfortable. And we were sitting on the opposite sides of the table. And so like far ends. And so I didn't know how to deal with them in the moment. But what I'm going to talk about today is how how to kind of deal with it in the moment, or if you have had an experience, what you can go through so that the negative effects of what they've said or done doesn't impact you strongly. I'm also going to talk about the different levels of sparkling or shining as it, as I teach uh, my clients and um, just what you can do, what you can do so that other people's insecurities or rudeness doesn't change who you are. So I alluded before about to these, this time in my life where it was like I was being tested. I was being challenged in, am I really who I am meant to be? And am I showing up in this really great way? And I knew I was, I knew I was. And so it was very hurtful that these things were said. And the funny thing is a little while later, with a friend that I thought knew all about all of this stuff, she gave me a gift. The gift is a frame. And the writing on the gift says, don't let anyone, don't, sorry, don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. And that's why I wanted to give that title to my talk today. Don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. You know, they may try and there's all this glitter inside. And it's funny because I said to her, this is so fitting with what I've been through, with the challenges I've had with other people. And she said, oh, what challenges? So she didn't know. She didn't know. And I said, why did you give me this then? And she says, well, you have a sparkle and you are like in front of the public. And I just don't, I don't want that to ever change for you. And so how amazing that on the flip side, I've got amazing supporter. And then I have these people that I was dealing with negativity around, right? And so maybe you're feeling this as well. And so I'm going to intermix the words shine and sparkle. I'll probably move to the word shine a little bit more because it is the ninth pillar of being a dynamic woman. It's the final pillar where you have to go through everything else in order to get to that place. That's why I'm saying like, don't tell people they're too much. Don't take away people's sparkle because it took them a long time possibly to get to the point where they're able to actually shine and sparkle. So first, let me go through what does it mean to sparkle and shine? Uh, and then I'm going to go into the different levels of shining and then um, what to do, the five steps that you can do when, when this negative Nancy or negative Ned come your way. So first, what do I mean by shining or sparkling? Well, if you have the dynamic you book or you've taken the program, please refer back to pillar nine. It's easy. Read the chapter again. You're going to get lots of great information. If you're like, hey, I want that book. Um, I'll make sure that there is a link in the description in the notes that you can go to 
and uh, pick up the book or even better, you know, join the Dynamic You program. So shining, as I said, it was, it's the ninth pillar and it's around kind of like the idea of shining bright like a diamond, right? The Rihanna song. Shine bright, Shine like, a bright like a diamond. That's why I'm a, I'm a coach, not a singer, <laughs> but you get the point. So what I see in this regard is diamonds are high value, right? They're high quality. They're strong and they're absolutely gorgeous. Like you're mesmerized by it when you look at it. And even if you're like diamonds, whatever, like think of a crystal shining, right? Just that glorious brightness and you're drawn to it. You're pulled in. And so other words that I'd say to describe someone who is, who can shine or someone who sparkles and you can right now picture someone in your life who you're like, man, they're, they're like glowing and, and I'm drawn into them. So other words would be positive. There's energy around them or they're like, they don't have to be energetic, but there's this like energetic pull, um, they stand in who they are and you see their qualities, right? They're like unapologetically themselves. They're confident and they're probably living a fulfilling life on purpose, on their purpose, right? And so when you're in that moment and this moment could be when you're in your profession, like for me, I've heard from others when I'm on stage, when I'm presenting, when I'm working with someone, when I'm maybe telling a joke with friends, these are the moments that I'm shining. When it's like, whoa, like look at this person um, in, their, in their glory. So maybe you've, you've felt that when you've seen someone singing and really getting in tune with the music and their emotions and everything. And you're like, wow, that was amazing. Like they're a superstar. Think of that. Maybe you've had moments in your life when you're like that. Let me first, I'm just going to open my book here. And I'm going to tell you about the levels of shining. So you can see like, are you shining? Do you have some steps to take? And I'll tell you, like most of my life, I have been shining. I like to shine. Um, I don't know if that's comes from being the youngest um, that I found just with COVID. I haven't really wanted to shine as much. And so I've been in one of the lower levels. There's six levels. This is from my uh, Dynamic U book. Uh, for me, in my version of the book, because I've had a few versions, um, this is on page 121. So in level one, you're hiding rather than being out and shining, you're staying home, you're holding back, you're keeping yourself in. And because you're hiding, you're not shining really at all. Level two is invisible. You go out to things and you meet people when you, you reach out. Um, and even though you're at events and you do things, you're kind of invisible. You're not getting much attention. No one's paying much attention to you at all. Not much is happening from you or for you. And when you leave, no one really notices. Level three, blending in. Yes, you're there. You're at the event or you're at the function, whatever it is, you're around people and people know you exist, but more or less, you're just a body in the room. You're not putting anything out. You're not shining in any way that makes you different from anyone else. And so imagine you're going to an event and everybody's wearing the same thing or in the wintertime, how everyone likes to wear black or blue, like gray coats. Um, and if we think of it in terms of your appearance, you merely blend in with everyone else wearing the same uniform as them. Maybe you're too quiet. Maybe you don't speak up or ask questions. That's blending in, right? You're just like one of every, just like everyone else. As we get into level four, we're starting to get a little bit of sparkle in, starting to shine just a tiny bit. Level four, you're seen. At this level, we start to shine. If we have a neutral place on the scale or a middle point, we are now past that and crossing into the shine territory. If you are a level four, you're being seen. You show up, people see you, and people know you're there, and people meet you. People may even get a feeling about you, but it's more of an external, shallow feeling. You're simply seen. And, and you know, it's not that you're shallow. It's that the way they're experiencing you is in a shallow capacity. So now we move into level five, which is being witnessed. If we go a little bit further towards shining, we're being witnessed. Being witnessed means you're not only seen, but you share by communicating in one way or another. 
you share and people get a greater understanding of who you are. You're discussing something, you grab a microphone or you ask a question, you're on stage discussing something, you open up a little bit more. And when you're being witnessed, you're seen for some of the things that make you unique. So maybe your values, your gifts, your skills come out um, more truly of who you are. Uh, okay, you are seen in a way people can begin to appropriately define you and describe you to someone else. And if you think of someone you have just been around, uh, maybe you see her in various places or at select events. And when you see her, you see her, but you don't really know her. Okay, so it's like we're getting, we're witnessing people but you don't have like the deep understanding. You're not fully pulled in. Um, however, you start to see a little bit of the underneath and that underneath starts to make you be like, wow, this is a really cool person. Uh, I really like this person. And so you're witnessing them in who they are, how they are. Um, and you're seeing that just that deeper part. And so level six, we're getting into actually shining. So your deeper inner self is seen by others. It's kind of hard when you go to some events and you don't really have the time to talk to anybody or if you host a party or a dinner and you don't have time to make those deep one-on-one -on -one connections with your guests. So that's it. if you are a shining person and then in those instances, you're like, ah, this sucks. I can't connect with others. Um, so when you're shining, you are in your core competencies. So that means the gifts, the skills, the talents that you have. And these are the things that people are destined to do. These are the things that you can use to leave a legacy. So that's when I was saying before, people have said to me, wow, Diane, like when I see you on stage, you're shining. When I see you working a room, like moving around a room or supporting clients, you're shining. And that's because in those moments, I am maybe smiling, I'm beaming with excitement like you feel my heart in those cases um i i saw this picture of one of my friends she posted it on social media and even though it was fuzzy it was grainy uh, it wasn't the best quality photo i couldn't stop staring because i could see her spirit her the essence of who she was like oozing out of this photo of her and i said to her um, or she said first, this is how I feel. This picture shows how I feel as a person. And I said, yeah, and that's exactly how I see you. And so we maybe aren't shining to everyone, but those who we do shine to, it's amazing. So amazing to, to feel someone when they're shining, to see that, to witness that, and then to be in the presence of it. And so when I'm, I'm going to go into what to do when people, yeah don't like that you're shining or want to take that away. But the key thing around shining is that you're just, you're glowing and you're in your element. Okay. So just think of that. You're sure you've had moments in your life when, when that's true. And so let's imagine you are shining, like you're on stage and you're doing your thing or you're with your friends and, and you're, you know, taking care of them. There's so many different ways you can shine. So let's just say you're in that moment. And someone says something to you or you're on social media and someone comments, <laughs> don't be so full of yourself or, whoa, you're too much or tone it down or whatever they say, or maybe you hear that they've said something behind your back. So here are the five steps that you can take in those moments in order to be able to deal with it. Okay. Step one, ask yourself. Does this person's opinion matter to me? Does this person's opinion matter to me? And this is especially true in cases online when we're like, I don't even know you. You don't know me. Like you think you know me based on what I've put online, but you don't. And that person doesn't, doesn't have any standing in your life. Now, maybe it is someone whose opinion matters, like a loved one or a friend or a coworker. And then it's even more hurtful, or maybe it's someone that matters because it has to matter like a boss, um, where you kind of have an obligation to, to be listening. So if the person's opinion matters because you care about them deeply, or because you have like an obligation, then, then we're going to move on to step two. If it doesn't matter, then you just got to 
let it go. Okay, let it go, wash it under the bridge. You can actually jump straight to step four. And so when we get to step four, I'll tell you what it is. So step two, this is something that was said to me when I was doing genetic testing with my first baby, my first pregnancy, which is my daughter. Um, we had genetics testing and it, it was all dependent on like the five month ultrasound and measuring and all this to see if our baby would be okay, would be normal, would not have any health problems. And the person doing the, the person doing the ultrasound couldn't tell me what there was, you know, what the, the answer was, it had to go through the doctor. And she said to me, when you go and see the doctor, open your ears, but close your heart. And that basically mean, and take the fact and don't let it impact you emotionally, personally. And so in step two, open your ears and protect your heart is what you need to do in this case. So a boss says something negative to you or a family member says something negative. You at that moment have to just take the thought into your, the fact into your mind and close off your heart so it doesn't deeply impact you. Because as I said in that, the other time when I talked about society and how they should stop selling people that they're too much, we get to that place of lack of worth and you've just like awoken the beast of limiting beliefs. And so we need to get to that place of, okay, this is not gonna affect me long-term and affect me personally. So then step three, we're gonna be curious and look for fact. Be curious and look for fact. So maybe in a meeting, let's say at work, you were so excited about this product, so excited about the launch of it, and you were talking to a potential buyer. And in your excitement, you talked so much and talked with, you know, so much power and charisma and everything. And your boss says you were just too much in the meeting. You talked a lot and you were very loud. Okay. So I'm going to be curious and I'm going to look for fact. And so I might ask, okay, so what is that? What was the result of that? Or what was the implication of that? Or what was the negative side of that? Because being excited and talking passionately and talking loudly can be a good thing. Well, I noticed that the buyer or potential buyer wasn't asking their questions because you just kept going and the buyer seemed to kind of pull back because you, you were giving so much energy. And so if you're curious in that way, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see how that would be the case. And, and then like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Well, just pause, maybe check in. So now you're in that learning growth place, which is good, which is good. Right. Um, if you're looking for fact and there's no fact, like in my instance, when, when I was talking with this woman who said I was too much at my church retreat, I was like, you know, explain to me how I'm too much. Explain, explain what I did that made you not like it. And, you know, it was funny because she couldn't, she could not place it. She couldn't say what the negative was and she's like it's in the end she's just said it's actually not you it's me I, i'm realizing i don't like myself okay so we're in a different completely different place here right and i was able to have that conversation and you can't always have that conversation especially if it's someone online or if maybe a family member that just doesn't want to talk about stuff but if you're curious you might get the understanding out of it and so in that work situation that I, that example I was, I was giving hypothetical example, if, if in you talking a lot, someone else didn't get to talk, then maybe it's more so that they wanted to shine and they didn't get to, right? So it might not even been that you were bad. It might've been that the client loved it. They were, they were all over it, but the other person was jealous and wanted to have some of that. And so again, knowing that helps you to gauge for next time and, and adapt. Um, and if someone tells me the, the negative reason or the negative result, obviously I'm going to want to change 
my actions, not necessarily change myself, but change my actions so that I can have a better result and make people feel better. Yeah, obviously I'm, I'm not a jerk um, and you aren't either. And so maybe just in hearing that. And so be curious, like a five-year-old would be curious again with your heart protected and your ears open. Step four, get support from those you trust. And so this is the step you jump to if you know, you've got a troll on social media and you're like, how did they say that mean thing to me? Oh, I'm never going to do video again because they said this about me. Then you get support from those you trust. You go to the friends and you say, friend, this is what was said. This is what happened. This is how I'm feeling. And so that's what I did. I had to, I had to, in one case, when there was slander, I had to go to my friends and be like, am I really like that? Is that, and they're like, absolutely not, not at all. Um, you know, they were ready to go, go to bat for me on this. And so when I went to someone that I trust, sometimes I have been told, well, actually, yeah, I can see how that's the case and maybe do this next time, but I trust them. And so I can be vulnerable and I can tell them this. And so getting that support might look like having the person be like, no, no, you're like, you're amazing. All is good. Or it might be that them being able to just lighten, lighten the hit, right? Make it less hurtful to be like, well, I can see where they're coming from, right? They're going to talk you through it and help you to understand it and feel better. And then number five, and the most important step, <laughs> continue to shine and sparkle, continue to do that. You want to know why? Because yes, you may repel some people, but they're not your people. But when you shine and you sparkle, you're going to be able to bring in and attract the people that love you most and the people that want to be with you, want to be in your life, who have similar values and beliefs. But if you are going to dull your sparkle, if you're going to hide it away, you're missing out. You're missing out on so much. Now, if you're struggling to shine or when I went through the different levels of shining and you feel like you're in like one to three or you're even in four or five and you want to amp it up to be a six, maybe you got big, big dreams, big goals, big things that you know you can accomplish or want to accomplish, but you know you need to shine a little bit more. Maybe someone's taken away your sparkle. Maybe situations have dulled it. I, I know for a fact, COVID my father passing away and kind of passing away suddenly um, and seeing him in palliative care. Yeah, my sparkle has been dulled by that. I'm not as shiny and new as I used to be. And I'm working through that, right? I'm getting support for that. I'm, I'm, I'm still looking for moments when I do get to shine, like with my clients and and maybe you think, while I'm sharing this with you, I'm shining a little bit. If you feel like you'd want more or to get it back, then I do encourage you to do the Dynamic You program. I'll make sure the link is in there so that you can click through and, and be part of that with me to help build that. If you know getting the book works for you, then go for that. It's always going to be better to do it together and to actually go through the program together rather than just have the book, but that's an option. And that's, I made that as an option for those of you who financially, like that's, that's the best you can do. I, I get it. So just kind of in wrapping this up as the, as the sign says, I keep it in my, keep it in my bathroom on my main floor so that I see it a lot. Don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. You know, maybe you're going to have a moment where you do feel like they like threw soot all over you and you can't shine or they turn the light off and, and it's just, there's no ability to sparkle or shine, but get back there, get back there. And if you believe that you are being a good person and you're being naturally yourself, you're not harming anyone, then you are wonderful the way you are. And there is no need for you to change who you are. You maybe just change some of your actions. But don't let someone else's negativity, someone else's jealousy, someone else's comparison to you be the reason why 
you're not allowed to shine and sparkle. You were destined to do it in your own way. We're all shining and sparkling in our, in our own ways for sure. Maybe some of us more than others, and that's okay. But don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. Go through the five steps and get yourself back to where you need to be. So there we have it. Your, your ways to continue to sparkle. And if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you get all of these different kinds of videos from me, all these messages. And if there is a topic that you would like to see, please send my team an email, team at dianerolston.com. Until next time, stay dynamic. Bye.